Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth parents webinar for Blaze Tots Active Start for Preschoolers with Disabilities presented by Blaze Sports America. My name is Ashley Fillets and I am the manager of training and education at Blaze Sports America and I will be your guide through our webinar today um, taking you through what parents of preschoolers with and without disabilities need to know about physical activity, healthy eating, and then how the Blaze Tots curriculum brings all that into play in your early care and learning facility. Just a few quick housekeeping things before we get into the webinar. Um, you'll see on for WebEx on the top control panel, you have a couple of options during this webinar. One, um, you can mute and you can start and stop your video. I will mute everyone on entry. If we have questions throughout the presentation, what I will ask that you do until we get to the end is to use the chat feature that appears in the top um, bar from WebEx. So if you hit on the little chat bubble, you'll be able to pull up a thing on the side that says chat. You can send a chat to everyone or just to me. So if you have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to go ahead and put them in there and I'll address them as they come. And then at the end, I will uh, allow you guys to unmute yourselves to ask questions live as well. Um, just a couple other things as we continue to move through our webinar today, um, I will pop in and out of our website so I'm able to actually show you live where some of our resources are housed on our website and then I'll come back to this PowerPoint here. So if any point in time you cannot see my screen, let me know, wave me down, send me a chat. Um, that has happened in the past, I think I fixed it, but technology um, is never perfect. So just give me a heads up if that is what you see. So we're gonna go ahead and get going at this time. So we wanna start with a special thanks funding for the Blaze Tots Adaptive Play Initiative for preschool age children with special needs is provided by the Georgia Department of Public Health, Maternal and Child Health Section through the Georgia Children and Elderly Fund. We thank them for this help, their help on this project. So the first thing that we're gonna get into for this presentation is talking about the importance of sport and physical activity for preschoolers. So the Blaze Tots curriculum and the purpose of this webinar in general is to specifically address um, deficiencies that we're seeing in preschool age children, which we define as children ages three to five years old, um, who are in the early care and learning setting and also um, those who are not, who um, are with and without uh, disabilities. And disabilities we define very broadly, could be intellectual, uh, physical, visual, um, just a, a wide array of disabilities. It can be one disability, it can be multiple disabilities. Um, so we are, our target population for talking today and for the Blaze Tots program is preschoolers ages three to five with and without disabilities. Um, so what I've done throughout this presentation is I have compiled the research for you. So as parents and caregivers of preschoolers, there's a lot of information out there that is helpful for us to know as far as best practices in physical activity and healthy eating. I have a preschooler myself. I would love to say that I keep up to date on everything that my preschooler needs to know, whether it's physical activity, healthy eating, uh, best practices in uh, television consumption, electronics consumption, but there's just so much out there and we know that there's only so much time in the day. So what I have done is pulled together the main points and the big pieces of information that you need to know and presented them all to you here. So what the research has told us is that preschoolers need physical activity to grow up to be healthy and strong adults. We know that um, elementary age in general, but more specifically preschool age, is very important to set um, healthy living habits such as um, physical activity, being moderate to vigorous in your movement activity, uh, healthy eating, early reading skills for a love of reading, et cetera. Um, but we know that they need that physical activities early uh, to grow up to be healthy and strong adults. The research also tells us that children who are active are more likely 
to be active as adults if they're active as children. So obviously we wanna keep our level of physical activity up throughout the lifespan. So if we can impress upon preschoolers to start being active and to remain physically active, they're more likely to remain physically active as adults which is gonna cut down a lot of comorbidities, so associated conditions um, as an individual ages, for example, um, obesity, type two diabetes, all of those are associated um, with a lack of physical activity as um, humans age. The research also tells us that preschoolers should get at least 90 to 100 minutes of physical activity every day. That seems like a lot but it's really not. Um, if you have a preschooler like mine, they are pretty active. There's not a lot of um, sitting. It's a lot of go, 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 go. Um, even with our preschoolers who use mobility aids, there's still a lot of movement because they're, it's fun. They wanna move, they wanna wiggle, they wanna grow. Um, so the target of 90 to 120 minutes of physical activity every day um, is not necessarily in one chunk of time. So I'm by no means saying that they need to be active for two straight hours to get those 120 minutes. Um, it is recommended that they are physically active in bouts of at least 10 minutes. So in our house, that's three to four songs. Um, we can hokey pokey three to four times and that's moderate to vigorous physical activity for 10 minute chunks at a time. Um, and then obviously in the early care and learning setting, that's even easier to get because you have those children with you all the time and you're programming for them. So continuing on with uh, the importance of sport and physical activity. So we know that preschoolers, specifically three to five year olds are really starting to master their gross motor skills. So what I mean by gross motor skills is running, wheeling, jumping, throwing, catching, skipping, hopping. All of those skills um, come together to form coordinated movements as a child ages. So for example, if a child can throw a ball, it's a lot easier to teach them how to throw an overhand baseball, which consists of taking one step out, leaning the shoulder back, doing a follow through with the arm movement and releasing the ball. If they are able to throw, just do the throwing part in general, then it's easier to add in um, the advanced kind of body turn and step with the leg. So those are kind of the fundamental gross motor skills that they need to be successful, not only in sport, but in daily life. So children need to be flexible. They need to be able to jump. Um, to reach things on a high shelf, for example, they need to be able to run, they need to be able to squat and maintain a squat for a long period of time. Um, an example that I like to share um, with the importance of gross motor skills, if we talk about like flexibility, it's important for as a child ages that they're able to reach up in their car, pull their seatbelt across their front and buckle it in. So for that, they need to have flexibility and strength. Um, and that's just an activity of daily living that has absolutely nothing to do with sport, but gross motor skills and the fine motor skills are physically grasping that buckle are very important um, to learn and develop in the preschool age. So as they get into the elementary age, they are able to play more cooperative games, um, participate in things that need higher level skill sets by really setting in preschool level those gross motor skills. Uh, for preschoolers, the number one thing is to make it fun. Uh, my son is three, and there is absolutely positively no buy-in if there's not a game, if there's not a competition, um, if it's not fun or maybe his idea. Um, it, it's, it takes a lot more encouragement to get him to get on board with an activity. So we encourage our parents that when you're doing physical activity to do it with them. Um, so that's the next point be a role model, do it with them, make it fun. This is your time to be silly. This is your time to engage. This is what I like to consider my time to kind of be a kid again too. Um, they see me having fun and they want to have fun as well. They continue to be physically active. Um, it works very well in our house. Additionally, um, we wanted to talk about the importance of if you have a preschooler with a disability of understanding the resources that are out there for you as far as helping your child have an introduction to physical activity and helping them remain physically active. So 
Uh, we are lucky in the state of Georgia that we have numerous, um, not vast, but numerous uh, adaptive sports programming across the state that allow our children with disabilities, whether they're cognitive or physical, um, to participate in sport and physical activity outside of what they might do at school or inside the home. So whether that's something um, a little more coordinated like a rec soccer league or something a little more loose like play dates, um, there are adaptive sports programs in your community. We have Miracle League stuff out there, um, Special Olympics is local uh, for our kids that are visually impaired. There's the Georgia Blind Sports Association. Um, Blaze Sports actually does adaptive sport programming for youth with physical disabilities. We run a couple different sports um, throughout our year, basically. We do wheelchair basketball. And we just started up with wheelchair tennis. We do year-round swimming, and we also do track and field. Um, for our wheelchair sports, if your child is eligible, we encourage them to start as soon as possible because it's hard enough to maneuver a chair, much less maneuver a chair in sport. So we wanted you to know that there are adaptive sport programming opportunities in your community. Um, one of the things that I'd be happy to connect and, and do for you guys is if you're looking for, hey, I'm in this county, what do you know is out there for me that might be a little closer? This is kind of what my child might be into, or this is what we're looking for. This is our schedule. I'm happy to connect you to resources in that area um, to find an adaptive sport or physical activity program for your child. So the second part kind of of this talk is, um, we talked about physical activity. Now we need to talk about the importance of healthy eating. So. For us at Blaze Sports, uh, those really run hand in hand. We talk about um, sport as a vehicle for success for our athletes and in order to um, succeed in life. One of the other things that you need to do besides um, be physically active is to practice healthy eating habits. So from parents of a preschooler perspective, the first thing that we like to talk about and what the research shows is to be a role model. Our children are way more likely to try different foods, to eat different foods, um, A, if there's multiple tries at um, food, and if they see you eating them and enjoying them as well. Um, so being the role model here is very, very important. Um, it's, it's recommended that in your child's early care and learning settings as well, that as much as possible, teachers in the classroom sit down with their preschool age children and consume uh, snacks and lunch to practice role modeling with the students um, at every opportunity possible. Um, it's important as parents that we choose fruits or vegetables um, more often as a snack. Now, the key word here is more often. Again, I'm a parent of a preschooler. Um, some days, you know, we have a lot of goldfish and some days we have graham crackers and other days we have fresh fruit, fruit slices, we have uh, celery with peanut butter and ants, it's my son's favorite, ants on a log. But we wanna make sure that when at all possible, we are buying um, and preparing fruits and vegetables more often as a snack. Um, the research is overwhelming that if you enjoy a meal together as a family, there are so many benefits, especially for young preschool age children. Um, a, they're seeing the role modeling of proper eating and healthy eating. There's also a good time to kind of debrief as a family. It increases socialization skills as well. And then what the purpose of kind of the end point of this healthy eating slide is, is we know that children are more likely to participate in healthy eating habits if they're involved in some step of the way. So that could be something as easy as taking them to the grocery store with you. Now I know with COVID, um, a lot of us have opted to not take our children into the grocery store with us, but when um, cases start to decrease and we start to get back to somewhat of a normal life, um, having them get involved with uh, the buying of the food. So this is a great time to teach them like what a ripe fruit looks like, what a ripe vegetable looks like, and actually let them choose. Um, back when we were going to the grocery store, my son could choose uh, two fruits, two special fruits for himself for the week where he actually picked the fruit 
Um, and it was a great conversation later when we got home of, hey, this is the apple you chose. Remember that apple? Well, we're going to prepare this apple for snack. And he was just way more excited about it. Um, and then the other part that we definitely can do at home, um, COVID on or COVID off, is to allow them to help prepare simple snacks or meals. So just the act of going through the preparation is not only um, teaching them great life skills, but it also, again, increases their buy-in and willingness to try um, new foods and have new experiences. I'm going to pause for a second, just remind you guys that the chat function is open and live. If you have any questions or comments along the way, go ahead and reach out to me there. And then I will unmute everybody at the end for um, live uh, audio questions as well. So as far as healthy eating, um, the research tells us that we want to allow them to try as many new foods as possible. Um, this often takes many attempts. Um, you can place something on their plate five to 10 times and they won't touch it, but maybe on the 11th time, they actually will try that new food. Best practice is not to do what a lot of us might have been um, told to do as we were growing up, which was be forced to clean their plates. Um, research tells us that we should go off of a I provide, you decide model, which is you provide a balanced meal plate for them. Um, which we'll talk about in a second at myplate.gov, and they decide what and how much of which they eat. Um, so for recommendations on what a typical plate should look like, uh, myplate.gov is a fantastic resource. There's actually some games on there that preschoolers can play where they actually pick um, more nutritious foods, um, but they have good recommendations on what the makeup of that plate would look like um, I've even done some things such as printing off uh, a makeup of a plate and sitting it next to my son's plate and having him go through, okay, this is a section. Do I have my vegetables in this section? Yes. Do I have my fruit in this section? Yes. Do I have my protein? What's my protein? Um, we've used that as a place map before. And then additionally, best practices and with the research support is we want to limit juice to only 100% juice and very small amounts of that. You can also um, water down juice with water so that you're diluting it a little bit. And we wanna make sure that we're providing ample milk and water throughout the day for our preschoolers. So we talked about kind of at this point, what the research tells us is best practice um, for healthy eating and physical activity. So now let's talk about what you can do at home. So we wanna help practice physical activities at home. We're into winter. So you might have to get a little more creative if we can't go outside as much. Um, but we wanna make sure that we are helping them increase physical activity, whether that's um, one of our favorite things to do is to go onto YouTube on our TV and do a kid's yoga session. It's free, um, super easy, it's engaging. Somebody's done the hard work for you. Um, they put together the program, you just participate along. Uh, we set up obstacle courses frequently at my house and then um, trips to parks and outdoor places where they can play are great as well. Again, role modeling is big here. This isn't taking them to the park and just kind of sitting on the sidelines and watching. Um, this is engaging with them and playing with them. And then also um, we wanna make sure that we are helping to practice healthy eating principles at home. So again, um, purchasing more fruits and vegetables, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, and less processed foods, allowing them to possibly assist with the buying and allowing them to help with preparing meals and simple snacks. So we talked about, again, our best practices in physical activity and healthy eating. Now let's talk about Blaze Tots. So Blaze Tots was a resource that was developed for early care and learning professionals. And it is, as you see the tagline, an active start for preschoolers with disabilities. So basically um, we found in our Blaze Sports programming that a lot of our children started at the age of five or six um, in our youth sports. And a lot of the times they were lacking in their gross motor skills because they hadn't had ample time to practice in the early care and learning setting, our parents didn't know how to help them practice inside the household. 
So instead of being able to jump right into learning the sports skills, they were having to go back and pick up those gross motor skills. So in came Blaze Tots. So this was a way for us to capture that population of three to five-year-olds who really need that gross motor skill and healthy eating curriculum and provide it to them so that the time that they get to older age adaptive sport programming, there was less of a learning curve involved for them. So the Blaze Tots curriculum is something that is intended to be used in the early care and learning setting by early care and learning professionals. And there is ample handouts and worksheets um, that would allow you to understand what your child is doing in the center and what you can do to reinforce what they're learning at home. Um, so it was created to increase the knowledge and practice related to adaptive sport, physical activity and inclusion, as well as healthy eating knowledge for preschool age children. Um, the actual curriculum comes with handouts, with messaging for parents and families that you would see um, come home either weekly or bi-weekly uh, on what they're working on and then what best practices are. And the Blaze Tots program was specifically put into place to help um, children with and without disabilities meet the daily requirements of structured physical activity or active play, both indoors and outdoors. So I'm gonna stop for a second because I just threw out two words that you might be like, mm, I'm not sure what that means. Um, what's structured physical activity? So structured physical activity and, and really active play, um, let's start with structured physical activity. Structured physical activity is what you think of when you think of like a gym class or a PE class. There's a set start time, there's a set end time. There is a set activity that will be performed. Um, and it's either led by a teacher, a gym instructor, or sometimes either even other children, but it has a definite start and end and kind of objectives along the way. Whereas active play is really what you think of when you have a child going out to a playground or running around inside a classroom. There's no set rules, there's no set start and stop time. There's no set intended objectives, but these children are being moderate to vigorously active during play. So that is active play. One second, I have a question that came through. All right, so this is from one of our parents. For a high energy autism child who loves to jump, climb and run in circles, what are some good activities that can be done to help build motor skills, especially since children cannot get out on a climbing structure uh, and now that it has gotten cold? That's a good question. Um, so I think the most success that we've had in my house and that we've had in our programming is A, to be creative in what you have in your house. Um, obstacle courses are great. Obstacle courses can be made with very little equipment, a lot of stuff that you already have in your house. Um, and they can be changed up regularly. So something that I love to tell parents uh, that is a very underutilized, at least for me, um, DIY piece of equipment in quotes is a pool noodle. So wait till we get to summer, go to the dollar store and grab five to seven pool noodles for a dollar. You can use them for anything. Directional, you can cut them up. They can jump over them. They can ride them. They're great for building obstacle courses. Um, starting to have set cues too, um, where you have a game and they say, okay, when we move to this red spot, um, we're gonna jump and we're gonna jump five times. Um, there's also been a lot of research that's gone into cue cards can be very helpful. Um, especially with children with intellectual disabilities. So giving them a picture of the activity you want them to perform when they get to uh, a certain place or a hand signal can be really great. Um, that would help build motor skills. And basically you just kind of build stuff in. When I make an obstacle course, um, I try to focus on one gross motor skill. So whether that's throwing, kicking, jumping, hopping, running, walking, um, I try to focus on that skill. So there's a set kind of pattern that they follow. And then normally um, before they repeat the obstacle course, that's my intended gross motor skill activity. So for example, um, recently just got off of a quarantine with both of my children who are in an early care and learning setting. They're both fine. Teacher was the only one affected, but we were home for 14 days. 
So one of our daily things that we did was an obstacle course. Um, oftentimes it was set up where we had circles that they had to walk or jump through. Um, I purchased a cheap balance beam from Target. A even cheaper balance beam is a two by four from Home Depot. They work just as well um, that they would walk across. And for example, we did um, throwing one day. So they picked up a small ball. They carried it with them as they walked through the small hoops. Then they traversed across the balance beam. And then I set up a Tupperware container, a couple Tupperware containers actually, and had them practice throwing, getting the ball in, and then run back to the start and do it again. I put on some fun music. Um, directions were very clear and very easy. And that was very successful as far as getting them to start doing motor skills while they were indoors. Okay, so what does Blaze Tots look like in the early care and learning centers? So ideally, um, this curriculum is provided by the early care and learning professional one to two times a week for 20 to 45 minute sessions. Uh, if you have a preschooler, you know that 20 to 45 minutes is about the attention you're going to get. Um, and that's including rest breaks, water breaks as well. Um, it's composed of physical activity, sports, and games. So it introduces our preschoolers to five different sports, plus has a general kind of motor skills component called Let's Get Moving. Um, the sports that it introduces them to are Blaze Tots basketball, Blaze Tots baseball, um, Blaze Tots soccer, uh, track and field, and Blaze Tots Tennis. So they get five kind of sport introductions. The skills build upon each other. And then they also have the general kind of gross motor skills games. Um, it also includes healthy eating practice. So again, in that 45 minute period, um, more often than that, they're either talking about healthy eating or they're actually taking the time to prepare a healthy eating snack. Um, we like to reinforce that it's teacher led in the classroom, but it's parent supported. Cause again, um, you guys are really what's important to make sure that this catches on and keeps going in your child's life. Um, Cause you can reinforce it at home. If they're only getting it for 20 to 45 minutes, one to two times a week in the early care and learning setting and not practicing at home, they don't have as much exposure. There's not as much activity around it and they're less likely to continue with it. Thank you. So as far as what the goals are for your preschoolers, um, again, these are set up, it's, it's an inclusive curriculum. So the curriculum provides activities for individual preschoolers with and without disabilities and serves a gauntlet of different disabilities in one program. Um, it, the goal for preschoolers is to participate in physical activity through active play and sport every day. So again, we're saying it's one to two times a week, specific Blaze Tots programming that can be done more, or they can use some of the activities outside the Blaze Tots programming in just kind of the everyday classroom setting. And the last goal is that our preschoolers are consuming healthy food, snacks, and beverages as well. So what I wanna do is um, take you guys over real fast. I know I'm kind of coming up on my time. Um, what we've done is we have thrown all of our resources for parents and for providers onto a website that is continually updated. So I've talked multiple times about what the research tells us. Um, this is where the research sits. So if there's something that you want to learn more about, um, we go to www.blazesports.org forward slash youth forward slash blaze tots. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and basically you come to this section there's one for providers and one for parents and then i've listed out all of these resources that are available for you right now um, to get more information on so one place kind of your library of information continually gets updated you can click on it it takes you right then and there let me kind of pop over for one second and show you what that looks like And hopefully you guys can see my screen. If you cannot, please let me know. Okay, so once you're on the blazesports.org main site, 
You're going to go to Youth Programs. You're going to click on Blaze Tots. Perfect. And this will pull you to our page. So um, you've got your About Blaze Tots. You've got the resources for parents at the top right here. Um, everything's hyperlinked, so you just click the libraries available to you, and then below that is the resources for early care, uh, early child care providers. One of the things that we don't have right now due to COVID, but is coming up that I wanted to make you guys aware of um, as parents of preschoolers with and without disabilities is when our COVID policies, I guess is the best term, release a little bit. Um, we are planning on having some Blaze Tots family play days where you can bring your child um, for an hour or so to one of our play days and get an introduction to all of the uh, Blaze Tots offerings and sports. Your child can come consume a healthy snack um, as a family, participate in some of the sports and activities and kind of get a jump start into what is Blaze Tots. So those are on hold for right now. Um, we do envision being able to do one in the spring. Um, socially distant and safe. So stay tuned for more information on there. It's going to appear here for the dates, but now that you have also registered for one of our workshops, our webinars, um, you will be in the loop as getting uh, up-to-date information on that. Additionally, we will be starting um, some flagship Blaze TOTS programming. So um, one of the challenges in the early care and learning settings now is that children from different classrooms uh, can't mix, right, um, due to COVID. So everybody kind of stays in their own pod. Um, so that makes pulling children from different classrooms to participate in Blaze Tots uh, challenging. So one of the things that we will be offering is a standalone pilot program um, in a couple different counties and later in the spring, uh, smaller groups of preschoolers where they meet once a week for six weeks for 45 minutes um, and we will have an instructor take them through the Blaze Tots curriculum. So this is happening outside the early care and learning setting, um, but more information on that will also be available on our website under the resources um, and under the section near family play days. Again, you'll be the, some of the first to get this information as you're already on our, our listserv. Check my chat real fast. Perfect, okay. So at this time, I want to open it up and see if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, you can use the chat feature or you can unmute yourself to ask me directly um, here. If you have anything additionally that comes up, questions, comments, or concerns along the way, this is my email, afillays at blazesports.org. Please feel free to reach out, um, especially if you want more ideas of how to be physically active with your child inside and outside the home. Um, any healthy eating tips as our programming gets started up in more and more early care and learning centers to kind of give you guys a jump start, I can be reached there. I'm going to just pause for a second. Do we have access to the curriculum? Um, you should. It should be, um, if you look under the provider section, um, it's normally the, the workshop, the full training webinar series for the providers provides them the curriculum but if you're interested in that it should be listed under the provider section or i can send that to you directly so just reach out to me via email um, and i can get that sent over to you so you can kind of look through the activities um, from a parent perspective i think we all uh, lean towards sometimes getting burnt out on uh, what games and things we can try and what equipment is needed so the curriculum could be a great resource to you to kind of have fresh ideas and kind of how to keep things fresh and light and different, especially as we uh, continue to enter the chilly time in the state of Georgia. Good question. Perfect. Well, I went a little over time. I apologize for that. It is 3.04. Uh, one quick question. Is it possible to go back and review the first few sessions that have been presented? So all of the parent webinars are exactly the same in structure. So um, I can absolutely make those recordings available to you, but it's the same presentation that's provided multiple times for parents um, who might not have been able to see it the first time. Um, the only other thing that we're offering right now is specifically for, for providers, and that's the three-part webinar series 
on how to implement Blaze Tots in the school? Good question. All right, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. If anybody has any additional questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys soon, and I look forward to hoping seeing uh, yourself either at a play date or your children in some of our Blaze Tops pilot programs soon. Everybody have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you so much.